Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. It will be part 275 in our series. And our title today is The Call of the Wise, Part 2. Scripture teaches the wise are the saints who have been given authority to feed God's sheep at the beginning of sorrows. Their authority comes from the Father from eternity. Matthew 24, verse 45. <laughs> who then is a faithful and wise servant? Whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. So his authority comes from God. <coughs> and in this respect, the authority coalesces at a certain point in time when it is due to feed those that are ready to be fed. Daniel, 12th chapter, verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly. None of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Now what this passage of Scripture is telling us is that there are many that are going to go through trials, the beginning of sorrows, because they're going to be tested. And the testing will be as a result of what they have received from the wise. In that respect, they are qualifying for the position that the Lord has given them, which will be revealed to them by the wise. The wise are currently being tested. The students of the wise will be tested at the beginning of sorrows. The students of the wise. Yes. We notice that it, it, the wise are called rulers over his household, so it's authority. You said the students of the wise mm -hmm. are tested at the beginning of sorrows. Yes. But they're beginning their studies at the beginning of sorrows. Yes. As you learn, you're going to you're experience okay. trials. Okay, interesting. Which enable you to put in operation what you've learned. But naturally, the teachers are also tested. Well, not so, because they've already reached the point where they're qualified Big to question. teach. Okay. Ahead, so the teachers are being tested right now, currently. Yes. Yes. I'm being tested, Brother Brace. <laughs> don't feel alone. Oh, trust me, I don't feel alone. That's the reason I'm happy. <laughs> now, this is an important point, not taught. Scripture teaches their wisdom, the wise, comes from their willingness to receive revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit. Mm. This is where the wisdom is imparted to them from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's job is to prepare the teacher for the time in which he will be equipped to teach the students. In the event that a student chooses to stop being willing to receive from the Holy Spirit during that period of time what do we see happen? You're anticipating we're going to cover okay. this lesson. Turn to 1 Corinthians 2nd chapter verse 6 to 7. <clears throat>
First Corinthians, second chapter, verses six to seven. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect or mature, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. So he's talking here about a type of wisdom that's not the wisdom of Solomon. Solomon had worldly wisdom. He's talking about a higher ordered wisdom. Eternal wisdom? Yes. <clears throat> Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom. <laughs> which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Now, this is a repetition of what we just read. <clears throat> when God called the Protestant teacher, he inculcated the ability to discern, to perceive, and to understand, which translates into wisdom. It's an eternal, spiritual, ordained wisdom. Not a natural ordered wisdom. What's that word hidden mean? Not seen. Not perceived. Okay. I, Not perceived by any... Is, is the uh, worldly wisdom seen? Sure. It is? Sure. Who, who, sure. who can perceive the hidden wisdom? <clears throat> person who has the Holy Spirit. Okay. But that's why he calls it hidden wisdom. A person that's worldly wise. Solomon was worldly wise. Everybody knew and respected him because they could see his worldly wisdom. Yes. So, the word see. They could actually see visually mm -hmm. or they could perceive it. Discern. Okay. okay. From what he was saying. Right. So that's that's what I'm, where I was going But if a this. person who has the Holy Spirit in them hasn't allowed the Holy Spirit to, let me use the word, deploy, they won't be able to see it. Or perceive it. Or no, discern it. They won't be walking in wisdom. Okay. A person who has this type of wisdom is not discerned. People don't respect a spiritually minded individual in this worldly system. Because they don't they don't have the understanding to appreciate that kind of wisdom. So they will laud, they will applaud, they will put up a pedestal somebody who has what they would call worldly smarts. <laughs> somebody who knows how to uh, do things, bring things into being from a worldly perspective. This is a person that's considered charismatic. It's a person everybody flocks to. They want to sit under his wing and just uh, bask in his allure and all the rest of it. <clears throat> but the, the true wise man is not perceived by the world. The Lord Jesus, ultimate example, he wasn't appreciated. Mm -hmm. Nobody had a war greater wisdom than he did, yet and still he was rejected. Sure. This is what Paul is talking about. He's talking about the hidden wisdom. This is what's inculcated in the Prototokos teacher. This comes from revelation knowledge. Now, what we find here. <coughs> drop down to 1 Corinthians, 2nd chapter, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know, that we might know, that we might know, perceive and understand the things that are freely given to us of God. People that operate in this wisdom <coughs> are not recognized as being wise. And the things that they speak are not recognized as being of value. <laughs> yes. As a matter of fact, they're spoken against. 
Certainly. Wisdom is pure. It is truth. It is from God, but it's not understood, so it spoke against. That's right. As if it's evil. That's right. That's why Paul talks about I speak this wisdom in a mystery, mm. because people don't understand it. We know one or two people like that, don't we? Yes. Mm. Mm. Here and there. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the key. This is the key to ascending yes. to the heights ascending. of what the Father has purposed for the sons. The application of this revelation knowledge, which translates into wisdom. We're going to take a look at this as some examples. Scripture teaches the kingdom of the heavens. The kingdom of the heavens will only accept those who are dependent on continuous revelation knowledge. I'm going to repeat that. Scripture teaches the kingdom of the heavens that Jesus preached will only accept those who are dependent on continuous revelation knowledge. Purity of life is not enough. We're going to see some examples of that. The, <coughs> the ten virgins. Turn to Matthew 25. We're going to read verses 1 to 12. Yes. Okay, so I understand what you just now said, but Mr. Jones, there's a couple things that are in, involved with this. One is the seeking. The other part is the desire to want to know, and then the the the, the ability to to allow the Holy Spirit to bring you into the understanding, and all you're getting get understanding. So it's a it's a thing where you have to be seeking it continuously desiring it wholesome not just to have bragging rats rights but to ultimately be better prepared for your future yes application yes yes, yes. the virgins yes mm. where are we going Matthew, Matthew 25, 25 verse 1 to 12 This is not optional. Most Christians don't recognize this. Though. Sure. So, so we're going to take these scriptures and we're going to closely study them. Verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of the heavens be likened unto ten virgins <coughs> which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. So what we find in this parable, the Lord is revealing specific principles about the kingdom of the heavens. He says the kingdom of heavens is like. So he's setting an example to explain the principles of the kingdom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. Now first of all we see they're all called virgins. I want to give a definition here as it applies to virgins. Virgins <coughs> comes from a Greek term, parthenos, which means one male or female who was never engaged in sexual intercourse. Now, we want to take a look at the, the, the why they're called virgins. They're called virgins because their commitment and relationship is only with the Lord. Hmm. All ten of them. They are pure, totally committed, laid it all down. That's why it starts off with, they all start off <coughs> seeking to meet the bridegroom. This is the highest, this is the creme de la creme. The very elect. Yes. Why? Because there is no limitation in their desire to please the Lord, seek the Lord, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> ultimately pursue godliness. No problem whatsoever. You wouldn't describe them as elders, elders would you? No. No. Because they're not seeking what we know they should be seeking. Mm -mm. No, it's not that. The other is a position. This is talking about 
a state of mind. A willingness. Yes, yes. I would think it would also, and I know it does, and you're going to agree with me, that it also includes, primarily from my perspective, no sin in your life. Of course. Therefore, you are clean and you are a virgin because you don't have sin in your life. You're a virgin. Yeah. Now, there's a wise virgin and a foolish virgin. So, yeah. just because you don't have sin in your life doesn't guarantee you anything other than you have you have a good beginning. That's what we're saying. Uh, sin doesn't even come into consideration here because if it did, he would never use that word. Virgin means somebody that's pure, it's clean, sure. wholesome. Yes. Pure and clean because they have accepted Christ's free gift of salvation for paying for our sins. So the sin that's in our lives, if we are foolish virgins, is not being accredited to our lives because Jesus has paid for our sins. Yes. <coughs> but even beyond that, they continuously walk in the fullness of commitment, which 90% of Christians don't do. From foolish virgins to Jesus would not virgins, would not call would not call a saved person a virgin, mm. although they are pure. He would call a committed person a virgin, because they commit to a life of purity and wholesomeness. That's a disciple. Yes, yes, prerequisite. So we're starting off with an understanding of the the way that they are perceived. No flaw whatsoever in them. Yet and still, we start off with a division. Five are wise and five are foolish. Although they all have the same lifestyle, they all have the same commitment, where does the difference come in? There is no difference when it first starts, starts off. The difference comes in at the ending of their progression, as we will see. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Now we have lamps, we have oil. What does this symbolize? The lamps symbolize the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So they all live by the word of God. <clears throat> their path is lit up because it's consist consistently in motion. They all have faith. They're living by the Word of God, applying the Word of God consistently. They all start off in the same group. Yes. And they all start off with oil in their vessels. Yes, we're going to go into what the, the oil symbolizes because that's where the difference comes into. <clears throat> Establishing the Word of God in the life of a saint and applying the word of God in the life of a saint constitutes a life of faith. <laughs> the just shall live by his faith. Your faith is predicated off of believing the word of God. Amen. You can't have faith outside of understanding the word of God <laughs> to rightly apply the word of God. Yes. So you're going to give an explanation of what the oil represents? Yes. Okay. Having, <clears throat> having that, the oil represents the Holy Spirit. Wherever you look, even in the Old Testament, your covenant, the anointing is always symbolized by oil. When an individual stepped into an office, king, priest, they were anointed with oil, the Bible calls it olive oil. The oil would flow down, symbolizing the spirit now is in the life of this person to guide him. It is the spirit that illuminates the word of God. Okay. That's a better way of putting it. Why? The spirit illuminates. Why the olive oil? Olive oil symbolizes the Holy Spirit. It gives them. So in this respect, yes. Did that start off as a Jewish or Christian principle? Olive oil representing Jewish. the Holy Jewish. Spirit, right. So what we find here 
they all start off at the same. They have lamps, they live by the word of God, exercising faith, no flaw whatsoever, all virgins. They all start off being open to the Holy Spirit's illumination. They have oil <coughs> in their lamps. It is the oil in the lamp that enables the lamp to give light mm -hmm. so that the person can see where he's going. No, no, no differences here. Everybody starts off, but we find that the, 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 the scriptures letting us know one makes a mistake. Not that they didn't have oil, it's they didn't have enough oil. Why? Because they made a decision. The decision was, when they first started off, that the foolish group determined they would know enough, they would have enough oil to last them until they got to the bridegroom. The wise understood that the oil in their lamps might not last long enough for them to get to the bridegroom. They may need more oil, so they put a patch of oil on their side, so when the oil in the lamp ran out, they put more oil in so they could continue to see. What, is, what does this mean? Yes, this means... Let me quickly yeah, jump in ahead. before you, you, you clarify that point. So we should look at this as... We use the expression, gather the oil, mm -hmm. which to us ultimately means gain understanding mm -hmm. and to do so of course we have to let the Holy Spirit teach us yes having more Holy Spirit <laughs> in our vessel for those who may be listening at home help them translate the vessel the extra oil as the Holy because well, what they're hearing is have more Holy Spirit yeah, that's, okay. a, that's a human perspective. But I, I, exactly, that's the reason I'm bringing this point out. Help them to understand that meaning. Yes. In addition to, okay, so we have oil, and, you know, in case uh, it gets dark, I got oil in my vessel. Now, I perceive that it's going to go about at a certain length, but I don't know everything. So what if I'm incorrect in my assumption maybe I ought to take some extra oil just in case it goes longer but as you know because I don't know how long it's gonna stay dark I don't you know so I'll take extra oil just in case it's just preparedness it makes common sense it's not a it's not a a, a scientific deduction to you know with, with calculus involved it's literally being ready for whatever might happen. You don't know what's going to happen. So prepare for the unknown. <clears throat> the idea here in translating when, <clears throat> when it talks about taking extra oil has to do with an act of the will. A determination. <clears throat> when they started off <clears throat> the five foolish have revelation knowledge. They feel they have enough revelation knowledge of things that are going to take place that will sustain them to the point that when the bridegroom comes they can meet him. The wise understand that there are things out there that they may not comprehend at this point. So they are prepared willfully to be open to things that have not yet been revealed to them and at that point they stand ready to extend their understand that's wisdom organized religion believes that they have it all down that direction they're waiting for the rapture to take place mm. they got their clothes ready you better believe it uh you know the strewn all over the ground and everything and then they're gone in a heartbeat they think they have revelation knowledge but no yes sir in addition to what you know you've probably you've all heard me say this before to remain in the receivable position to stay look at just in case you know uh, i got a little i got a few more hours or minutes i'm going to hear more i am going to receive more i've got enough for the current status, the way we're at, I got enough. 
but just in case this goes on beyond what I'm imagining, I better get extra. The, the availability is still there. Let's get more. Let's get more. It doesn't make, you know, it just makes sense to get, stay in the receivable position, accumulate as much as you can, especially when it comes to what we're talking about. It's eternal. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a concept that sh should be easily deduced by an average thinking individual. The majority of people think they have it all down pat mm. because they can't, they will not acquiesce to the fact that the world that they think they live in could radically change. So they think this is going to happen, that's going to happen, this is going to take place, I'll be ready when the X, Y axis crosses. And God is looking at a perspective saying you need this to comprehend what's going to take place. You're not ready for it. Anyway, let's continue on. Okay, <clears throat> drop down to um, verse 6. At midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. At midnight. Mm -hmm. Midnight. He has a reason for saying that. Midnight is the darkest, darkest hour, hour yes. okay. when you need light the most. Midnight, he comes. Well, we see that this is where the division takes place. The division does not take place at the beginning. The division takes place at the end. The fool that said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. What does this mean? This means that there are things taking place that the foolish can't understand. That's why it's talking about darkness. In the darkness, you can't, you're fumbling around. You don't know whether you're on solid ground, whether you're going to walk into a building, down a slope. You can't see. You have no direction. Why? Because your senses are blinded. Your understanding is limited to what's going on. The world today, people think they have a handle on the way things are going. Radical changes are taking place. The Holy Spirit is <coughs> enabling the wise to understand that the world is going to radically change. Be prepared for the change. Well, those that are going by what they understood 500 years ago mm. or 50 years ago as, you know, going to be the same when the end comes are not even thinking about any radical changes. Sure. So they're going to walk off the cliff because at midnight they're not going to be able to see what's taking place. It's the same thing here with these. Now, these are virgins. They're still committed. They're still wanting to get to the bridegroom. <clears throat> Christians today don't even fall in this category. they got sin in their life. They're not committed. They're doing their own thing, thinking that they're going to make the rapture. So they don't even have the, they don't even have the wisdom that these have mm. to get them to the midnight. They won't make it to the midnight hour. They're going to fall before 12 o'clock <clears throat> because they don't even have that much oil in their lamps. That means they're more foolish than foolish. Sure. Mm. <clears throat> the foolish are still called virgins. Mm. What do you call these people are foolish sinners? Anyway, let's go on. So, the division takes place. The wise comprehend. They understand what's going on and they are prepared. They can see. The foolish can't. They answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us <coughs> and you, but go ye therefore, go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. What does this mean? This means the only way an individual is going to make it is if he has the revelation knowledge within himself. Yeah. You're not going to have time to impart it to somebody, to explain what's going on to somebody else who doesn't understand. Because you're going to be too busy preparing yourself for what's taking place. The rapture is going to take place because the Holy Spirit is going to impart understanding to the person that's open to him. When you see these things, no, it's imminent. Yes. So literally what's being said here is that 
you're going to miss the rapture. Your salvation can still be intact if you survive, if you, if you repent and acquire more oil to understand your situation. But it's not laid out like that right here. Go to them that sell. Well, wait a minute. We don't have enough. We need to go to those that sell. You got plenty, but they don't have to go back and get more because they, they know they have enough. The, the, you can't tell somebody to go do something that you know is impossible to do. So the, those that have to go to, to, to them that sell means you, have, you still have a chance to make eternal life. When he talks about them that sell, he's talking about the source. So what actually, what in actuality they're saying is, you better go get understanding from the Holy Spirit, so you can make yourself understand what's going on. That the Holy Spirit give you the oil. It's too late at that point. 